Arthur Arzola would have graduated with a master's degree next month. His wife, Crystal, will accept the certificate at the ceremony. Justice is no more violence. Justice is acknowledgement. And justice is joining the movement. The movement today that's being celebrated all over the world, V-Day. As the founder and president of Spectre Company, Mr. Ray Adamick has helped restore hundreds of historic prominent buildings and houses such as this, the Kuntz House, which was built in 1911. Well, this concludes a fiery competition at University of Laverne's Chili Cook-Off. I'm Yetzko Alvron, reporting for Foothill Community News. Mmm, that's good. Hundreds of friends and families gathered at University of Laverne to remember 26-year-old Arthur Arzola. They lit candles, they sang, they comforted each other. It's a huge testament to everyone who's, you know, to him, for everyone who's come out to, um, to, to give their respects to him. Arzola was one of the 10 people who died in the fiery bus crash in Northern California last month. He was a recruiter for Humboldt State University and was chaperoning students on a tour to the college when their bus collided with a FedEx truck. He carried this inner light that was so deeply beautiful and he shined that back to people and allowed them to be their best selves. It was beautiful to be part of this day. Arthur Arzola would have graduated with a master's degree next month. His wife, Crystal, will accept the certificate at the ceremony. Tons of his classmates came out and to honor him. It's been an amazing experience. It was a wonderful service. I'm Yetzka Wauran, reporting for Foothill Community News. Since the wake of the worst known typhoon to hit the Philippine Islands, one church has worked diligently to help victims back home. At the Filipino Disciples Christian Church near downtown Los Angeles, people are praying for victims and survivors of Typhoon Haiyan. Laura Henderson, a mother of three daughters, is trying to figure out how to send money and supplies to her family. They're, they're now homeless. Um, I'm working on I'm working on getting some help for them. At least they can um, put, you know, put a little roof and, you know, some, some walls, you know, in their, in their house. We have three main projects. One is to collect financial support for the Filipinos. And we're doing this through our website, personal donations given to our church. And also we encourage our members to ask their neighbors and friends. And we got in a lot of money this way also. The church has made fundraising efforts, organizing special offerings, donations, and rummage sales. So now we have 52 boxes sent to the Philippines through LBC. And from LBC, I heard that they will send it through Red Cross. We still have bags of clothes uh, and, pam and you know pampers outside the church. Hopefully this week uh, we will be gathering more boxes and we'll be sending more boxes. And as our pastor preached today, that when somebody's in need in the Philippines, we still help them out. And we're glad to be able to do that. In spite of the disaster, members of the church are staying hopeful and strong for their loved ones here and back home. Hello, I'm Yetzko Waura calling on all rubber duckies to join the 17th annual Raging Rubber Duck Race and help raise money for a good cause. The competition takes place at Raging Waters in San Dimas, with proceeds from the event going to McKinley Children's Center, which provides homes for children who are abandoned and abused. This year has been a dry one in Southern California. As temperatures rise during summer months, the threat of wildfires also increases. California has already had more than a thousand wildfires just this year. In order to stay safe, remember these tips. Clear brush within a hundred feet radius from your home. Keep your patio and decks free of debris. Move heat sources like wood piles, fuel tanks and sheds that can catch fire away from your home. And have an emergency and evacuation plan ready for the entire family. This is our last show for this year. That will do it for us. Thank you for tuning in. From the University of Laverne, this has been Foothill Community News. See you next year. Alex Yamada, a senior, 
discovered he suffered from depression and ADHD when he was in his teens. He kept his feelings to himself. I just felt very lost. I don't talk to my biological family about it. What do I do, you know, who do I talk to? A man supposed to never show emotion. It's like people think, like to put me in a category, a little box of depression, of their definition of, you know, of depression. It's like, that's not it. It's not a box. Depression's more like a continuum, you know? You could go like from either slightly having it, but still being very functional, to being, you know, having a severe case of it and not being very functional. Today, he has gotten his life together. He receives counseling when he needs it, but he is reluctant to tell people about his depression. Alex, in spite of all your struggles with depression, where do you see your life right now? My life's going pretty good right now. I'm going to graduate on time. I have a job. I, uh, you know, I'm looking to go to USC, so that's always good. It. Sumitra also sought counseling. And while she struggles with depression, she tries to keep things in perspective. You're going to hate some things in life. You're going to love some things in life. But you know what? At the end of the day, you are going to take it as a pinch of salt. You take the good stuff, you let, let the bad stuff go, move on.